hi guys this is the unboxing and uh, kind of review of the Xiaomi mini router so you will find many unboxing videos but uh, what we find to struggle is how to do a setup in English how to use this router on a laptop or on an iOS and Android device so I would be covering all that in this video today so the packing like always it's neat you can see it's a cardboard box so again like we see this is a copy of the Apple magic trackpad it has uh, one it, so basically it's a router it's not a modem so it has one input LAN port and two output Ethernet ports and one USB port for making the cloud storage available and making the storage accessible online these are two antennas which are connected here so it goes like this Oops. You can pull these antennas like this and so it's kind of good looking uh, I have already installed one of the routers so the signal strength is pretty nominal it's not as uh, strong as it is advertised on Xiaomi website that it can pass through walls and all but uh, it's it's fairly okay so apart from the charger so this is a 110 to 240 volt charger so this would work in US China Europe and almost all countries we here it's all in Chinese the only thing that can be handy is this barcode for the app download again I would be giving you a link directly when I would be showing you how to router through the PC for these apps download so quickly jumping on to the basic you know the, the main thing that how do we have to set this up so I would be cutting the video and using the screen recorder software on my laptop to demonstrate the setup guide So here we are. So what you have to do is essentially after you switch the router on, you will see different networks. I have connected to the Xiaomi C3C1. This is the default name which will come in the router setup. I have not changed it just so that you don't get confused. You can also do one thing rather than connecting through the Wi-Fi, you can directly connect through using the LAN cable. So the first page which opens for the setup is mewifi.com. Even if you will try to log in through 192.168.0.1 or the 192 address which is advertised in the Chinese manual, it will redirect you to mewifi.com. So if you are connected to the Xiaomi router, you open mewifi.com. This is the page which is going to come. Now I'm using this video uh, in Google Chrome just to give you an idea that uh, because until you have set up the router you would not be able to use the Google Chrome for getting the translation I am just doing this because I was able to set up the router and I can give you the information in English with respect to which all hyperlinks means so here is the original page which comes so I don't know what this, this means so this is the password for my Wi-Fi so the first time also it will the screen sometimes uh, appear like this we can enter this password here in the router setup I have not changed it just so that you don't get confused you can also do one thing rather than connecting through the Wi-Fi you can directly connect through using the LAN cable so the first page which opens for the setup is mewifi.com even if you will try to log in through 192.168.0.1 or the 192 address which is advertised in the Chinese manual it will redirect you to mewifi.com so if you are connected to Xiaomi router, you open me wifi.com. This is the page which is going, going to come. Now, I'm using this video uh, in Google Chrome just to give you an idea that uh, because until you have set up the router, you would not be able to use the Google Chrome for getting the translation. I'm just doing this because I was able to set up the router and I can give you the information in English with respect to which all hyperlinks means. So, here is the original page which comes. So. I don't know what this, this means so this is the password for my Wi-Fi 
So the first time also it will the screen sometimes uh, appear like this. We can enter this password here, the desired password we, uh, we would want to keep for the router and click on login. So this is the second page, uh, default page which comes. So again, this would look something weird like this. I should not say weird, it's a Chinese language, but it's very difficult to understand. Even by using translate option, it does not do a proper translation. So doing the translation quickly. So this is the logo, routing status, and routing settings. So why I wanted to do this uh, review was my cable operator provided a static IP and generally uh, DHCP it works fine, but finding how to configure the static IP was a pain. So this shows that there are three currently devices which are connected to my router and I can see there is no load on my internet because I'm not using it. Uh, the router has been switched on since eight hours. Uh, this is the speed which is showing. So settings. So as you can see, this is currently in Chinese. It will get translated. Yeah. So this first is the Wi-Fi settings, this first link. Here we have the option to set up both 2.4G and 5G Wi-Fi. So by default, this password we entered at the first screen, this password. It's the same as what we used for logging into this particular page. And this is the uh, setting for 5G Wi-Fi. So I, the, by default, the channel was one here. And I changed it to 11 because th that was running on my previous router and I faced no problem. Second tab. Is the internet setting tab. And here, basically, we have to enter the GSCP set or oh, static IP settings in case, uh, you know, our service provider provides a static IP to us. So this was my static IP. I got it. Enter it like this. Uh, so basically, we have to click on this link. This would appear in Chinese to you, but this means modification of access when we click here. So DHCP, it will automatically enter the IP, right? Static IP, we have to enter here. I just do cancel so that it does not change my router setting. Then the VAN port rate, it's automatic as recommended. MAC address is the current MAC address of my device operating mode. So this router has the capability of working as a router as well as a repeater. So in case you want to use this router as a repeater, so you can click on this link switching and then you can do the configuration later. So in the security center, the third tab, here what we have is basically essentially what we have generally on mobile phones. There are, there are two modes, blacklist mode and whitelist mode. In whitelist, I would be able to hard code the devices which should only connect Blacklist, I would be able to blacklist some of the devices which should not connect to my router. This is the router username, password, change screen. Why I'm going through uh, page by page and tab by tab is because when you are reading it in Chinese, you might not understand what exactly each link means. The third one is the LAN settings. This is kind of, you know, uh, not use, useful until and unless you want to do uh, Changes in the IP which is assigned. So what, what basically essentially it means is the DSCP service, the devices which we're connecting will be getting the IP from a range of 31.100 to 249 and uh, the LAN IP address of this current laptop I'm using. In advanced settings, we have the QS modification option, the quality of service modification option in case we would like to tune it. I would not like to play with this currently because my router is working perfectly fine. The internet speed is better. Uh, the I would again translate it to English so that in case you would want to change this, how can you do that? So there are three speed is the auto win. Um, manual changes you can do the changes in case you have the networking knowledge. UPnP again I fairly honestly do not have idea why UPnP used. I have not even googled it so. As I do not want to go into the settings, but here for your reference, this is the English uh, translation of the chat like this. Uh, so basically, we have to click on this link. This would appear in Chinese to you, but this means modification of access when we click here. So DHCP, it will automatically enter the IP, right? Static IP, we have to enter here. I just do a cancel so that it does not change my router setting. Then 
the VAT port rate, it's automatic as recommended. MAC address is the current MAC address of my device. Operating mode. So this router has the capability of working as a router as well as a repeater. So in case you want to use this router as a repeater, so you can click on this link switching and then you can do the configuration later. So in the security center, the third tab, here what we have is basically essentially what we have generally on mobile phones. There are, there are two modes, blacklist mode and whitelist mode. In whitelist, I would be able to hard code the devices which should only connect. Blacklist, I would be able to blacklist some of the devices which should not connect to my router. This is the router username, password change screen. Why I'm going through uh, page by page and tab by tab is because when you are reading it in Chinese, you might not understand what exactly each link means. The third one is the LAN settings. This is kind of, you know, uh, not use, useful until and unless you want to do uh, changes in the IP which is assigned. So what, what basically essentially means is the DSCP service, the devices which we're connecting will be getting the IP from a range of 31.100 to 249 and uh, the LAN IP address of this current laptop I'm using. In advanced settings, we have the QS modification option, the quality of service modification option in case we would like to tune it. I would not like to play with this currently because my router is working perfectly fine. The internet speed is better. Uh, the, I would again translate it to English so that in case you would want to change this, how can you do that? So there are three speed is the auto win. Um, manual changes, you can do the changes in case you have the networking knowledge. You will PNP. Again, I fairly honestly do not have idea why UPnP used. I have not even Googled it. So as I do not want to go into the settings, but here for your reference, this is the English uh, translation of the Chinese wordings. DSCP static assignment. Again, if, I think uh, this would be same as in case I would want to assign some static IP to one of my devices. Uh, it can uh, come to use in case some specific download sites uh, or some specific sites want us to access to uh, particular IPs only. TDNS, advanced port rate, it's automatic as recommended. MAC address is the current MAC address of my device. Operating mode on mobile phones. There are, there are two modes, blacklist mode and whitelist mode. In whitelist, I would be able to hard code the devices which should only connect. Blacklist, I would be able to blacklist some of the devices which should not connect to my router. This is the router username, password change screen. Why I'm going through uh, page by page and tab by tab is because when you are reading it in Chinese, you might not understand what the capability of working as a router as well as a repeater. So in case you want to use this router as a repeater, so you can click on this link switching and then you can do the configuration later. So in the security center, the third tab, here what we have is basically essentially what we have generally each link needs. The third one is the LAN settings. This is kind of, you know, uh, not use, useful until and unless you want to do uh, the IP which is assigned. So what, what basically essentially it means is the DSCP service, the devices which we're connecting will be getting the IP from a range of 31.100 to 249 and uh, the LAN IP address of this current laptop I'm using. In advanced settings, we have the QS modification option, the quality of service modification option in case we would like to tune it. I would not like to play with this currently because my router is working perfectly fine. The internet speed is better. Uh, the, I would again translate it to English so that in case you would want to change this, how can you do that? So there are three speed is the auto win. Um, manual changes, you can do the changes in case you have the networking knowledge. You will PNP. Again, I fairly honestly do not have idea why UPnP used. I have not even Googled it. So as I do not want to go into the settings, but here for your reference, this is the English uh, translation of the Chinese wordings. DSCP static assignment. Again, if I think uh, this would be same as in case I would want to assign some static IP to this. Uh, it can uh, come to use in case some specific download sites uh, or some specific sites want us to access to uh, particular IPs only. Again, no idea what DDNS is. I would not like to Google again. 
in case you think it's useful, this is the English translation. Port forwarding and DMZ in case we would like to forward the port is uh, English for this. I hope it is helpful. And then again, PP, PT, PPTP, and here is the English translation for this too. So essentially, if, if you, you know, set up your router, this is the second tab is the main tab for you where you can enter your IPs, you can modify your password and system status is basically in case you want to upgrade the firmware version. My current firmware version is the latest one. And in case you want to restore to your factory settings. So this is the language tab. Unfortunately, currently English is not there in the by default support. So uh, now the next question which comes is there was a USB port in this, right? So can I use this router uh, and connect my hard disk or external storage to use this uh, to back up my uh, photographs from phone automatically or use this device for uh, accessing the files on my laptop which is stored on my hard disk on a central place. So if you click on this link download, so it takes us to this page www.mewifi.com slash mewifi underscore download html. Here we can download all the, uh, you know, firmware versions, PC client, Mac client, iPhone client, Android client. So I have downloaded, as you can see, xqpc client.exe. My laptop is Windows. I have downloaded this. I have also downloaded the Android application on my Android phone and iOS application on iOS phone. Unfortunately, right now, the for iOS phone, the English translation is not available, but it's pretty simple. In case you want me to do a video on that, I can do that. And I would be attaching the Android translated uh, APK file, which obviously is not made by me. I don't want to take any credit from the person who made it. I found it on a website, found it working perfectly fine. And you can, in case you have an Android device, you can use that application directly. First time sign in would require a Xiaomi account on the app. Then uh, you have to connect to the same Wi-Fi, uh, same Wi-Fi, I mean the Xiaomi network Wi-Fi on your phone. And then you would be able to browse the file, back up your photos on the device. So again, I have installed this particular XUPC client. I would quickly open it. So here, uh, it looks like this. So basically, quickly, uh, just to give you an overview of what is this, this particular text means currently is there any download going on or not. This this particular text means says, in case I would like to add a torrent download, I can do so. So this VT would ask me to browse a file, a torrent file, and I can directly use this as a torrent client. This particular icon will take me to the storage. So uh, to give you an idea, so this is my USB, which is connected to my router. I yesterday backed up my Nexus 5 and iPhone through this, uh, through the application which were installed on my phone respectively. And you can see there are photo backups which are done in iPhone. It backs up the camera roll. Pretty useful. It backs up the video file as well as the JPG file. Useful. I have made a folder of movies that I can put movies here. I can use on the cloud movies which are available to my laptop and I also have a MI box, the TV box. I would be doing a review of that and how to route that also in my next video. So again, making this uh, this router in 300 rupees gives you a cloud storage, uh, gives you an option to back up your photographs directly from your phone. It's pretty useful. Uh, means I really liked it. And 300 rupees is nothing. Uh, I got a TP-Link 300 Mbps router for 1400 from Amazon.in. I think this is much, much, much better. So in case you have specific questions, you can post in the comments. I would surely love to help you further. And uh, here is the file which I would be, this sign Q, XQ app is the file for the Android client. I would be uploading both the files for your help in the description section. So do let me know how the review was. This was my first review of any of the product just did it so that people could uh, get benefit out of it take care